the new iPhone is coming out and maybe it's time to upgrade your 90s era Motorola, but at a price of upwards of $800, how do you find the money without breaking your budget? In this video, I'll show you how to turn three dividend stocks into an iPhone payment plan, how these three stocks alone will pay for your new iPhone every single time. We're talking dividend stock investing today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. And you know, first I've got to send a special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, the new iPhone is set to release this September, and while it probably won't be a major design change, it is still expected to sport a faster A-series processor, a new 5G chip, and increased battery life. Apple has sold more than a billion iPhones since its 2007 launch, and there are more than a few people planning on picking up the new one in September. Now, the value investor in me has never been able to quite bring myself to put down that kind of money for an iPhone, and early rumors are that this new one could be the most expensive yet. Just going off the last model as a reference, that 64 gigabyte carrier model was $799 without some kind of data plan discount. But with a little planning, I found three dividend socks that will actually pay for every iPhone you ever get. In this video, I'll show you those three dividend stocks and then reveal an iPhone dividend strategy that will pay for your phone. We'll be using StockCard.io to research these dividend stocks. I'll leave a link to StockCard in the video description below. Click through and then go to the portfolios in the top menu. You'll find the Bowtie Nation portfolio in the stock picks section. It's free to follow and you'll get email notifications whenever I buy or sell from the portfolio. And as a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for all you out there in the community. Use the promo code Bowtie Nation, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Let's get started here. And first, I'm going to show you those three dividend stocks before revealing that strategy and how much to invest to pay for your new iPhone. First though, I want to get your opinion on this. Do you use your dividends or your investments to help pay for current spending or is your portfolio strictly a nest egg kind of idea? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below. Are you withdrawing from your investments or letting it ride for the future? First on our list of dividend stocks is $4.5 billion asset manager Alliance Bernstein Holdings, ticker AB, with its 6.8% dividend yield. Now you don't hear as much about Bernstein as you do some of the bigger asset managers like BlackRock, uh, but this is a really well-run company with some strong advantages. The company has grown assets under management by an annualized 47% over the last four years and continues to attract investor assets in equities and bonds. Bernstein has a strong catalyst in the Asia Pacific region where it's increased its fees by a 14% rate over the last few years. And while a lot of this industry has been caught in that race to the bottom and is shifting to those lower fee passive products, Alliance Bernstein has been able to do the exact opposite. The company has carved out a name for itself in that active equity investing and alternatives to increase its fee revenue each year. Shares pay a 6.8% dividend yield that has grown regularly, and the stock has produced a 26% annualized total return over the past five years. The company has made a clear commitment to those dividends, paying out 100% of adjusted earnings to investors and growing the payout at an 11% annualized rate. Earnings are expected at $3.38 a share this year and growing 10% to $3.71 next year, which puts it right around 13.3 times on a price to earnings basis. Now that puts it right in value territory against multiples like 23 times on shares of competitors like BlackRock and Charles Schwab. We've still got two more of those dividend stocks to highlight and the iPhone strategy to reveal, but I wanted to show you how I picked these dividend stocks for the strategy. First, I screened for the stocks with a dividend yield of at least 5%. This is a cash flow strategy with the emphasis on that payout instead of longer term growth, so we want stocks that are paying out as much as possible. I also looked for dividend stocks with a history of increasing those payouts because, well, Apple has this annoying little habit of increasing the price on its iPhone, we better invest in stocks that are going to pay us more in the future. Finally here, I also screened for stocks with a positive price return over the last five years. Now cash flow is important and it's what we're focusing on here, but I also want to see that portfolio grow over time as well. Next on our dividend stock list, AbV Incorporated, ticker ABBV with its 5% dividend yield and a strong cash flow growth. Like Bernstein, AbV doesn't get as much attention as some of the other drug makers, but this is a solid, stable stock for any portfolio. Besides just an overall strong pipeline of drugs and the financial strength for R&D spending to keep that up, the company has two drugs, Rinvoke and Skyritzi, in phase two and three trials, expanding their listings 
that could make these the next blockbusters with a combined $15 billion in global sales potential. AbbVie pays out a 5% yield and has increased it by 225% since inception in 2013. That's a 15% annualized dividend growth. Earnings are expected at $12.57 a share this year, growing 11% to $13.92 a share in 2022 and putting it at just nine times on a price to earnings basis. Now that's deep in value territory for a safety stock and strong cash flows. Our next dividend stock is a popular one here, Records Management Iron Mountain, ticker IRM, and its 5.4% dividend yield. The company is a physical and data storage leader with more than 1,400 facilities storing documents and data for 95% of the companies in the Fortune 1000. That's nearly a quarter of a million customers and 93 million square feet of facility space. Records Management still makes up the largest chunk of the storage and services business, but it's expanding the data management component what I really love about Iron Mountain is its recurring nature of revenue. The company has a 98% customer retention rate, which means it locks businesses in by storing their data and their records, then it has that recurring stream of management fees that is really reliable. It means you get a stock with extremely stable revenue growth and the cash flow to keep growing that dividend. The company has some strong growth potential in expanding that data center footprint with total potential capacity of three times its current leased capacity. That's really gonna help drive growth in that data management component, which is the higher margin service than records. The dividend has grown by a 5% annual rate over the last five years, which is a little slower than some of the others, but supports a solid yield and a great 9% annualized total return in the shares. Management is guiding to as much as $4.5 billion in sales this year and 3.45 in adjusted funds from operations. Now that means the company pays out 71% of its FFO to cover that dividend, which is a little on the high side, but still leaves plenty of room for growth. You have those three dividend stocks. Now the question is, how do you use these to pay for that new iPhone? Analysis at a Simco found the average lifespan of an Apple device at four years, three months but who wants to wait four years for a new phone? So instead, we're gonna plan on changing out your iPhone every three years. At an estimated price of $799 for each phone, that means you need to collect $267 a year in dividends to buy your new phone. Now the average yield on our three dividend stocks was 5.7% and that's on a yearly basis. You're gonna collect those four quarterly dividend payments a year from each of these, but that yield is still gonna be on an annual basis, 5.7%. And to find out how much you need to invest to collect that $267 in dividends each year, we divide that amount by the 5.7% dividend yield for an investment of $4,678, or $1,560 in each of the three dividend stocks. And now before I get a lot of comments about if you had $4,600 to invest, then you just go out and buy a new iPhone. Remember, this strategy is gonna buy you a new iPhone every three years. If you were to just spend that money outright to buy your phone, $4,600 divided by 800, you'd be broke after about five phones. Instead, with this dividend investing strategy, you're gonna collect enough in dividends to buy a new phone every three years forever. Plus, you've got that money growing in the three stocks and can eventually afford to get yourself something nice like maybe a Samsung. Click on the video to the right for the seven dividend stocks I use to pay my rent. Seven monthly dividend stocks for constant cash flow. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.